Hello, we're going to cover sections 10-2. It's a lot of material, but none of it's terribly hard. What I'm going to do is um, show you an entire screen from the PowerPoint and then go and draw the pictures and then come back and do another screen. For the most part, I'll do it that way. So um, you'll want to leave some blank, some space where there's space on the PowerPoint in order to add some pictures, okay? So um, the first thing we um, will do is define some, a certain kind of angle so that we can define arcs, okay? So a central angle of a circle is an angle whose vertex is at the center. It's a very intuitive name. Central angle has a vertex at the center. An arc is part of a circle. And why these are connected is an angle would cut the circle into pieces, and those pieces we call arcs. Depending upon how big they are, we have different names for them. The smaller arcs, which will be the point in the interior of a central angle, is called minor. The points on the exterior of the central angle are major. And then if our angle happens to be a straight angle, making it a diameter, and, and a, being a central angle, making it a diameter, then it cuts the circle into semicircles. Okay, so now I'm going to um, give you some pictures to connect to this. Okay, so first of all, central angle. Central angle is just an angle whose vertex is at the center. That's all it is. Okay, so I would say angle APC is a central angle. Now, um, the hardest thing, oops, let me show all of this. The hardest thing in this chapter is going to be when we start having not just central angles, where the vertex is at the center, but angles where the vertex is on the circle. It gets a bit complicated. So um, know that all the angles we'll talk about aren't central angles, but the ones you'll see today are. Okay, this divides the circle into, this angle cuts the circle into two pieces, between A and C in this direction, and between A and C in that direction. Okay, the short direction is a minor arc. And we name a minor arc by naming its endpoints. So we would say arc A, C. Like start at A and get to see the shortest way possible on the circle, and we put a little arc symbol over top. Now we could name it C, A. Those are the same arc, okay? Now a major arc which means we're gonna start at A and go to C, but we're gonna go the long way around. Now we can't just call it a sec arc AC because we already have something named that. So what we do is we do say start at A, and then we give any point on the circle on that major arc. So this point, for example, arc ADC. Start at A, go through D, and land on C. We need to be careful with a major arc, we name it with three letters, um, that you don't get this confused with an angle. That happens later when we start getting these other kinds of angles. So arc ADC, start at A, go through D, all the way around to C. Um, it doesn't matter which endpoint we start at, so we can start at C, go through D, and all the way around to A. It also doesn't matter which interior point we use. So start at A, go through E, end at C. These all name the same arc. Okay, so if you have an arc named with two letters, you know it's minor. If you have it named with three letters, it probably is major, but it might be minor. There are going to be some situations where, for clarity, we might name an arc a minor arc even with three letters. Um, we don't have to. Um, when we'll, you'll see that on a theorem today where we want it, the theorem to apply whether it's minor or major, so we name it with three, okay? One more thing before we get um, back to the PowerPoint. A semicircle, you know semi means half. 
Okay, to have a semicircle connected to a central angle, we need that central angle to be a straight angle or a diameter. So um, from A to F is a semicircle. From A to F this way is a semicircle. So to name a semicircle, you have to name three letters. So let's start at A, go through D, and land on F. That would be a semicircle. Okay, ACF would also be a semicircle, but it would be a different semicircle. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. So we named the arcs. Now let's talk about arc measure. This is our very most important idea. Oops, I started to draw. I'm gonna go ahead and, and draw this and then we'll look at the rest of this slide. Okay, this is our main idea. The measure of a central angle equals the measure of, or the measure of an arc equals the measure of the central angle that cuts that arc. The angle that's in the interior, the arc that's in the interior. I don't think I said that very well. We'll go back to the words here in just a second. But the idea is this, whatever this measure is, that arc has the same measure. Okay, so let me write this down using the, the, these points. The measure of arc AC equals the measure of angle ABC. Okay, it's the main idea. So think about this. Let's say this is 50 degrees. That means this is 50 degrees. So I would write the measure of arc PQ is 50 degrees. Well, what would be the measure of arc PTQ from P through T all the way around to Q? We would take the whole circle minus, let me right here pushing my arm, minus the arc, the, the minor arc, and we get that this big arc has a measure of 310. So we didn't define angles to have a measure greater than 180, but arcs can have a measure greater than 180. So um, it's not the way we defined um, minor and major arcs, but it is true that a minor arc has a measure, oops, I'm gonna share my PowerPoint here. The minor arc has a measure less than 180, a major arc has a measure greater than 180, and a semicircle has a measure of 180. So that's what we get right here. The measure of a major arc is 360 minus the measure of the related minor arc. The measure of a semicircle is 180. Okay, you might pause and write that down. Okay, adjacent arcs. So, you know, generally adjacent means next to. So, it's same thing here. So, oops, actually let me give you the next thing and then let me draw the pictures. So adjacent arcs are arcs in the same circle that intersect exactly in one point. When you see a picture, you'll see that they're next to each other. And that gives us our arc addition postulate. You're gonna use it really easily. The measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two adjacent arcs. Let's get pictures for both of those ideas. Okay, so first of all, for our definition of adjacent arcs. Arcs are adjacent if they're in the same circle, so arc AC and arc CP are adjacent. Arc AC and arc CP are adjacent. Now, we can use that idea to um, write what we mean by arc addition postulate. Um, arc addition postulate says the measure of arc AB, okay, and remember that that means it's the measure of that angle, plus the measure of arc BC, which is the measure of this angle, equals the measure of arc AC. 
Now I'm actually going to write arc ABC. So this is the situation I was talking about where we might write arc ABC. It could be minor or major. With the way I've drawn it, it actually is still minor. But what if this were far enough away that when we add them together, even a minor arc and a minor arc, we get a major arc. I wouldn't want to say AB plus BC equals AC. So that's why we would name this with a major arc there to take care of all of the possibilities. I mean, I mean we name it with three letters. Might be minor, might be major. Okay, this is very much like your angle addition postulate. The only thing is we, with this, we can get something bigger than 180. With our angle addition postulate, we always got something less than 180, okay? Because we didn't define angles to be greater than 180. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Congruent circles. So circles, um, congruent means same size, same shape. Every circle has the same shape as every other circle. So all that we have to think about with circles and congruence is size, and that comes from the radius, okay? Congruent arcs, we have to be much more careful with. Congruent arcs have the same measure, but they're also in the same circle or congruent circles. I'm gonna draw some pictures. So if we were in the classroom and I had my great big chalkboard to use, I could do this even more extreme, but don't, don't write this down with congruent arcs because I'm gonna show you something that's not, where we don't have congruent arcs. So let's consider this circle. Maybe that central angle is um, 60 degrees. This arc is 60 degrees, okay? so. Let me get, give you another circle. Not my board. Or maybe almost. Uh, I'm going to redraw. Okay. Try to get the whole circle on the board. Okay, so that's a 60 degree arc, and this is a 60 degree arc. They're both 60 degrees. Let me erase everything but the arc. So that's a 60 degree arc, and uh, this is a 60 degree arc. Congruent, same size, same shape, no. Now there is something the same about them. They're similar, because they're the same part of the circle. They do have the same curvature, but they're not congruent. Okay, so for two arcs to be congruent, let's now get this picture. Um, either they need to have the same measure. Um, so if that's x, this is x. Draw another angle. That's x, this is x. So they either have the same measure. Well, they do have the same measure. And we can mark them like that. I don't know why, what else I was going to say about that. Okay, so let's write this down. So if a, b, if the measure of arc AB equals the measure of arc CD, then the arcs are congruent because they're in the same circle, okay? And if the arcs are congruent, both their measures are congruent and they're in the same circle or in congruent circles, okay? Go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so congruent circles, same radius. That's all we need. Congruent arcs, we essentially need same measures and same radius. Okay, this is um, something that's gonna make lots of sense to you that gives you, knowing one equality or one congruence gives us another congruence. And notice that it's a biconditional. So we have if and only if, so it reads both directions. So in the same circle or congruent circles, minor arcs are congruent if and only if their central angles are congruent. Central angles are congruent 
if and only if their minor arcs are congruent. Draw a picture for that. Let me um, include just these last few things. Um, all circles are similar. Mention, oh, I didn't mention that. I said they all have the same shape, but that means they're all similar. And arcs are similar if they have the same measure. That's the end of our slide. Let me come back though and um, give you a picture for this, okay? All circles are similar because they have the same shape. Arcs are similar if they have the same measure. They're only congruent if they have the same measure and essentially the same radius. Okay, let me go back to the um, whiteboard and give you one last picture for this theorem 10-4, and then I've chosen three problems to do. Okay, so what this says is if arcs are congruent, angles are congruent. If angles are congruent, arcs are congruent. Okay, so if um, arc AB is congruent to arc CD, then um, angle APB must be congruent to angle CPD. And the converse of that is true as well. It makes sense because whatever this angle measure is, let's say it's 35, that's 35. This is 35. That's 35, those are congruent transitive. Okay, so this makes sense. Okay, I've chosen three problems from your homework that I want to, um, to I'm gonna give you examples. Number four, so this is on page 546, question number four. And I'll actually use my different colors here because the picture in the book uses different colors. So you're given this picture. I can reproduce this. Should have paused and drawn it, but I was seeing how it worked if I just kept going. Okay. Okay, so you're given this picture. And the question says, name the red minor arc and its measure name the blue minor arc and find its measure. Easy. Okay, so the minor arc is arc EF. The measure of EF is 68 degrees. Okay. And then it says name the major arc. The major arc starts at E, goes through G, lands at F, and the measure of the major arc, let me write that better, EGF is 360 minus 68 degrees. What is that? Two, um, 292, is that right? Yeah, okay. That's it. Okay, let's look at number 16. So my recommendation on a problem like this, where um, you are asked, you're given one picture and you're asked a whole bunch of questions, is rather than trying to do all of the questions separately, go ahead and label everything you know on the picture and then answer the questions, okay? Hope my time doesn't go over not having paused this. So it asks for the measures of all of these arcs. Okay, so rather than thinking about each of these separately, I, before I answer any of these questions, I am going to write everything down that I know on this picture. Okay, so this is 42. Vertical angles are congruent, so that's 42. Now, how would I find this? So something that you need to notice in this picture is that this is a diameter. So this is a semicircle, it's 180. So to find this arc, or this one for that matter, let's do 180 minus 42, okay? 
So this is 138, and that means the angle is 138, this angle is 138, this arc's 138, and that's also the case. This is 180, that's 180. Now let's answer the questions. The measure of arc RS is 138. QRS, QRS, it's a semicircle, it's 180. Q, QST, so and this is our first one that's a little bit tricky. You start at Q, you go through S, and you land on T. So it's 180 plus 42. 222. Okay. And then arc QT, we've already found 138. Okay. More than one way you can get to each answer, but um, I would recommend you've got a section where if you've got a section where you're asked a lot of questions, one picture, draw the picture, write down everything you know, and then um, and then you can answer your questions easily. One more question. Um, look at number 22. I'm actually just going to have you look at it in the book. I hope you have this open. Um, the question is, are the red arcs congruent? Why or why not? Well, they're both on number 22. They're both semicircles, um, but they're not in congruent circles. So the answer is no. They'd have to have the same measure and be in congruent circles. Okay, I hope that's helpful. I don't think you're gonna have any trouble with this homework. Glad you're off to a really good start with chapter 10 because we're only doing four sections and then we'll take a, an assessment over it, a, a quiz or a test. So keep doing a good job. Goodbye.